Hello everybody and welcome to another Honkai Star Rail video. Today we are doing the 2.0 update of the characters tier list on the on the channel here. Uh, this is going to be very exciting. Um, uh, I mean, let's just get right into it. Let's get right into it. Uh, before I move up Sparkle, Black Swan, and Misha, I'm going to go over a few of the other characters that I believe their places might have switched. Uh, just so everybody knows. This is a tier list where the characters of the game are being compared to just the other members of the cast. When a character is really powerful, is added, right? That character raises the bar, right? When a character that is worse than other characters is added, that character lowers the bar or has the, you know, ability to lower the bar. The bar doesn't get much lower than Arlan, but and physical trailblazer, but I mean, yikes. Um, what are you gonna do? Um, with all that being said, uh, yeah, uh, that that's how it works, right? A character, a new character, can raise the bar, and with that being said, other characters will naturally move down, even though nothing has changed about them compared to that other character that is now possibly considered S plus they would be like a whole rank down on them. So they would move down to S even though maybe they didn't change. Right? So that is why you might see movement like that. Right? Uh, so, you know, yeah. Uh, with all that being said, let's get into it. I think it's about time to start being a little harsher on a lot of the characters. Okay? We're in 2.0. If a character is considered completely irrelevant and obsolete, um, we are going to, you know, show them that. Uh, it's, it's going to show in the tier list, right? And uh, with that being said, I think it's about time, right? This, by the way, this list is not specifically designed to be talking about accounts that are brand new to the game obviously an account that is brand new to the game and doesn't have any other healer in the entire game besides natasha is going to use natasha right and she's a good unit for that right but this is not meant for that this is meant for i would say probably like the average player let's just assume you owned every character in the game all right that's the most fair way to to judge this right um, so yeah, we're going to be a little harsher and we're going to start moving characters down notches. Okay. Um, that's just how it is. I think that, um, Fire MC is probably really outscaling, right? Um, and I hate putting Xu Shang here because I think Xu Shang is one of the best four star DPSs. Well, I did at least before. I think Sampo probably actually has more uses than her nowadays, right? Uh, especially with, like, you know, you have Black Swan, you have Kafka. Those are the characters that kind of make uh, dot teams work. If you wanted to, you could go to, you could go, like, the Exodia dot team and go, like, Kafka and Black Swan with a Ruan May to enable the double DPS and then also, you know, just a any preservation unit, right? You could do that. That is like the Exodia dot comp. But in a world where you have to use two teams in a situation like MOC, uh, a comp like Kafka or like Black Swan Sampo and then Kafka Serval is not that bad. Um, or I would say Kafka Gwenaifen. Um In my opinion, that is why Serval is F tier, right? Because if even if you're a dot team, you're pretty much exclusively using uh, Kafka. I would really hope you went for Kafka and Black Swan, right? I would really hope so. And then also for your four stars, you'd probably be using Sampo and Gwenaif and if you're even using them, right? Um, and also if you're using, you know, if it's like physical or something like that, because physical has the highest bleed, uh, hopefully you will have pulled for Argenti if you're going for a whole uh, dot account. Um, because Argenti, you know, puts on the, the physical bleed whenever he breaks people, which is the highest damage DPS in the game, 
uh, highest damage dot in the game is the physical bleed, so that would make sense. Uh, I think Yukong is pretty lower proof, and what I mean by that is like she's not going to lower down into D tier. She's a harmony unit. She's good in a lot of situations. Um, so let's just you know let's leave her here. I would say. Right. Uh, we are going to move down Yanqing, Bayou. Um, I don't know. I don't know about lowering her to, uh, I think, hmm, I'm actually going to raise Gwenaifen, because I think Gwenaifen actually has more uses in the game than Zhu Yi, especially if you're running dot comp, and maybe you didn't get one of the two characters with, a uh, Kafka, uh, Black Swan, um, I do think that I would probably raise her above G, especially because they're both kind of, they fill the same role of DPS, but I just feel like uh, when Iofen has more uses throughout the game, and so I believe, like, you know, in a direct comparison, when Iofen is probably what I would put above Ju Yi. Um, I think I overrated Ju Yi, but very, very slightly. Like, just, just one space too slightly. So, yeah. Um, Herda, I think I, I don't know, man. I think I might, I'm going to keep her to where she is. I'm going to keep her to where she is, at least for now. Um, I, I, I do believe for all the same reasons why she made it from F tier to B tier in like the, the last tier list that added pure fiction. Um, I think that that was a good call and I think that she still has a place in the game. Um, pure fiction went to a dot kind of mode but luckily it still stayed a heavy aoe mode right um so yeah it, it's the rotation right now is currently based off of dot but it stayed in aoe mode like i was hoping for and most people were you know hoping for i would say um to continue giving elation characters a place in the game um so yeah um, I believe that she is still useful in that, and just because this round of pure fiction is more focused on dot, definitely doesn't mean that every other element, or every other um, rotation of pure fiction is going to be that way. In fact, obviously it's going to be the opposite. It's going to change. Okay, so for that reason, I think I'm actually, I've been looking at B tier since I've been talking about this, and I think everything is going to stay exactly where it is in B tier. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way with with where everything is in B tier. Uh, as for A tier, um, yeah, the reason uh, Himiko is up here is because pure fiction. Uh, the reason QQ is above Zilla is because. So here's the thing, right? I think that QQ and Zilla both synergize with Sparkle very, very, very well, which is why it is really hard. For me to, you know, say, oh, I'm going to put Zila above QQ because she works really well with um, Sparkle. Well, you know who also works really well with Sparkle? Who's like one of the best characters with Sparkle is QQ, right? So, I mean, the, the three characters that benefit the most from Sparkle's release are Don Hong Ael, QQ, and uh, Zila, right? And like I said, Whenever new characters are added to the tier list, other characters will move up because they have just like that one more synergy in the game. Or if a new relic set is added, all the characters that benefit heavily from that relic set that becomes their S plus relic set that really um, pushes them to, to a stronger point than they were before in the game, um, they move up in the tier list, right? And characters that don't benefit as much will probably stay the same or move down in comparison to the ones that are moving up. Um, when a character like Black Swan releases, a character like Kafka, who is obviously going to be the most paired character with Black Swan, and Black Swan is a very powerful unit, Kafka will move up because Black Swan came in. Uh, we're going to get to that here very soon. Um, but yeah. Uh, because of the addition of Sparkle and there being a support that really just does every single thing that a QQ, Zila, and a Don Hung would want, um, 
I don't know if I can move Don Hung above Ting Yun. I don't know if I can do that. I think that he definitely um, stays uh, above Blade and, and the people that he is in front of. But I'm not quite sure. I don't know, guys. I don't know. It feels like it just got so much easier to play Don Hung. Because if you have Don Hung, there is about an 80% chance, I would say, hopefully, that you pulled for Sparkle, right? And so that's very good. But I don't think that Don Hung has the same amount of uses in the game that Ting Yun does. In fact, I think I probably, you know, put Ting Yun a little too low in the tier list. Because I would argue that maybe Don Hung IL surpassed Argenti again. And at least maybe still behind uh, Jing Liu but in front of Argenti, but I don't think that he power crept, uh, like he, he replaced Ting Yun, which makes me feel like I really did place Ting Yun a little too low. I would say probably right there is good. Um, but I do think that this probably happened. Um, man, there are just so many good characters in the game. I think Argenti still stays as plus tier. We'll see. We'll see, actually. We'll see. Um, we talked about moving these characters up. I think with one more Harmony character in the game, right? Because, you know, every time there's a new character of a path put in the game, especially when it's support, you usually don't want more than, like, at the absolute most, two supports on a team, right? So just the addition of a support that is really, really good will very 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 slightly push down the priority of the other supports in the game that are lower than them right like you're less likely to use asta now because like her whole ultimate is like the increase your team's speed the problem with that is that, that is still very good that is still just as good as it was before but now there's another character in the game another harmony character that does everything well that um that has a Bring your main DPS up in the turn order. Um, the forget the term for it. Uh, the action forward. Yeah, you just have yet another support in the game that has an action forward. And yeah, it's only to one person, but it's like the one person that you really need it on. And also, it gives them the fat buff. And then Sparkles all does give your team another fat buff. I think that's the problem with um Asta. Is Asta gives your team speed, but other than that. Her skill is an attack. Her attack is an attack. Um, she she doesn't let. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like all the other harmony characters are kind of doing something that she can do in a different way, but just also buffing the crap out of their damage. Um, which I think is Asta's main weak point. She doesn't. Do that a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, with that being said, I think Asta will move down and QQ and Zilla will move up. I think it's a no brainer that QQ and Zilla probably both move above uh, Topaz now. And I think, uh, I don't know. Now, this is a. So Jing Yuan, every time he takes his turn, he wants to use his skill, right? So. He, in a way, also works pretty well with Sparkle. Um, he wants to use his skill every time he takes his turn, because if he uses his skill, then his Lightning Lord can go. And Sparkle is actually a huge W for Jing Yuan enjoyers, because Bronya, right, will bring you up in the turn, or will advance your action forward, and then Jing Yuan will use his skill, right? But he only gets the buff that Bronya gives him with her skill, he only gets the buff for that whenever he's using the attack. The Lightning Lord then comes in and does not have the buff that Bronya gave him. However, Sparkle, her buff lasts longer. And that means that he brings Jing Yuan up in the turn order. Jing Yuan uses his skill. I mean, there's an infinite amount of skill points, so he can always do that. right? And even though he wants to use his skill every time he goes, he's still not too hungry for it. And, right, so there's always room for him to use his skill, which is good. But whenever he uses it, and he, he does the extra damage, you know, from the buff that Sparkle gave him, then Lightning Lord goes and benefits 
from the damage boost. Jingyuan is an enjoyer, not as hard, but is still definitely an enjoyer of of a uh, Black Swan. I think Doctor Ratio moves behind all four of these other DPSs, not because obviously, like I said, not because he got worse, because they got better. Right, because they got better. Pela, in my opinion, um, I think other than when you're using Pela with Jing Liu, see, I moved her up when Jing Liu came out, but I think I may have overestimated it a little bit. Um, most people, I would say, don't use Pela when they're using Jing Liu at least anymore. Um, honestly, it would probably be better to use even like a, a second DPS. Like someone who synergizes really well, like Blade, or maybe even um, a second Harmony character to go hyper carry Jing Liu. Um, that's definitely possible. I think I overestimated very slightly how much Pela would impact, uh, w would get a, a buff based on Jing Liu being added to the game. Uh, it's still there, but just not as much, I believe. So I think Pela is also going to move behind this crew. Um, Kafka, right? I think Kafka moves up to S tier because Black Swan is added to the game. Um, we're about to put Black Swan in place. Um, and I do think despite Jing Yuan being an enjoyer of, of Sparkle, and this is really hard for me to do um, because I love Jing Yuan, um, I think QQ and Zilla actually do become better than him this patch, right? This could change. I could be wrong about this and say, okay, no, Jing Yuan is still a little better than Zilla. Um, but I think that QQ and Zilla use Sparkle uh, really well, just like Jing Yuan does, but just even better, right? I mean, like, this is probably second and third best character with with uh with sparkle and on top of that um they both benefit from the mono quantum team uh, which is going to become a very popular team for those uh sir, um silver wolf havers and fushuan havers of course you need uh anyway japard japard's time of reckoning will be coming next patch i right, will we'll have to see really how he stacks up against Adventuring, but I believe Adventuring is the character who is meant to directly power creep uh, Japard. Uh, Japard has still, you know, he still has his place in the game um, because Ushuan, yeah, she, she does, she's a preservation unit. She's very, very good. She's obviously like, she was my pick for third best character in the entire game last patch, but. Um, you know, he still had his, his things that he did. He could freeze, um, because he's ice. So he's really good. His skill is pretty good. His alt, um, is, I would say pretty easy to get off and pretty easy to permanently keep a massive shield on your entire team permanently. Um, so yeah, his alt would give a big shield to your team based off of his defense. He's pretty much one of the only characters in the game you would want, uh, like you're you're focusing defense stats on. So if you have pieces that rolled not that great, got like a million defense on them, or you you have pieces of the set that are that are the defense set, uh, he's actually a good character to put it on because uh, Fushuan operates off of HP percent. Um, so yeah, him and March are like the only two characters. Well and um fire mc that revolve around defense the thing is um it looks like adventuring is just going to do everything that japard does but better in every way and then might also even operate as a sub dps that's crazy that is insane um so uh japard will not be moving yet i'll be saving my breath right now but adventuring is coming, and I think Japard enjoyers need to be ready for that on the tier lists, right? Because when our when 
when adventuring comes, he's going to raise the bar, right? And Japard will stay where he is, right? But here's the bar. Here's Japard. And then the bar, the bar will go here, and Japard will stay here, right? You know what I mean? And that's why characters can move down in you know, comparison to other characters. I've, I've explained that quite a lot. I sound like a broken record. But I feel like people don't understand why I push characters down. Be like, really, bro? Natasha is an F tier character. I just created my account five days ago, and Natasha is incredible. In fact, she's the only of four characters that I even own. Sounds like a top four character in the game to me. Like, okay, bro. Well, I mean, that's all right. Um, okay. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> continuing. Um, I actually think Silverwolf moves above Welt this patch because of the really um because mono quantum is finally kicking into high gear um mono quantum is it's finally real it's here it is here uh i think people thought it was going to happen earlier because of how early you know silver wolf entered the game um i think people i mean people have definitely done mono quantum right but eh it's definitely not, it definitely was not nearly as good as it is now with Sparkle, who works with like the two best quantum damage dealers in the game now, and she's a five star harmony character. It is now in, in, in high gear, right? I think Blade is okay to stay where he is right now. Maybe you could argue that Silverwolf is, is over him. I don't want to put Silverwolf too over him yet, though, because I think. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. Um, we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I definitely don't want to overrate Silver Wolf because she's still like towards the top of S tier. Still, obviously, I'm putting her as a very very strong unit in the game. Um, but yeah. Um, so next up is Black Swan. Black Swan here. Um, wait, no, let's, let's just look at S tier real quick. S plus tier. Uh, yeah, 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 mm hmm, yep, 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 yep. Okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm, I'm actually really satisfied with where S plus tier is, and I think S plus tier is going to stay where it is. All right, so. I don't want to overreact to Sparkle. I don't. I think Ruan Mei is still an absolutely incredible character. An incredible character. I think Ruan Mei is still top one or top two characters in the game. But I think I'm going to put Sparkle above. Here's why. Here's why. Why, right? Before Ruan Mei came out, Bronya was considered the best character in the game, arguably. Like she's the, you know, before whenever she was especially whenever she was the only five-star harmony character, right? Um, she was at least the best harmony character in the game, and harmony is probably the best class in the game because supports are what make the engine run, right? And then obviously, you know, the sustain class is next because you you know, you can't have a team without sustain, right? But overall, right, when Ruan Mei came out, people were like, Ruan Mei is incredible, right? But she doesn't do what Bronya does. Bronya still does unique things, right? She did not directly power creep Bronya. And some people even argued that Bronya is still slightly better than Ruan Mei. I'm not one of those people, which is why Bronya is right below Ruan Mei. I think it's semi close. Here's the thing. I think that Sparkle is oddly enough, like Sparkle doesn't do the same things Ruan May does. So Ruan May still very much has a place in the game, right? Obviously, I mean even Bronya still has a place in the game when Sparkle is released. But yeah, people when Ruan May came out, um, everyone was like, Yeah, she's really, really good, but she doesn't do what Bronya does. 
and maybe Bronya is even better. And Bronya is better, straight up, in certain cases. The thing is, those two are really close, but Sparkle is straight up a, a, um, a power corrupt version of Bronya. That is just what Sparkle is. She is just Bronya, but power corrupt. There is almost no argument you could use that Bronya is better. There is almost none. Right? And so, when that's the case, when it's arguable that Ruan Mei and Bronya are, are on the same level, right? But it's inarguable that Sparkle and Bronya are on the same level, then Sparkle must be above Ruan Mei. And that is not always true, right? Because it depends on the team. It depends on the comp. It depends on what you're doing. Um, like, you know, because Ron May does something different than Bronya and Sparkle do. But overall, I do believe that Sparkle is better for more situations than Ruan May is, right? And, um, here's why. Here's why. Let me just give you an example of the DPSs she works well with. Uh, she probably works decent enough with every single dps in the entire game right but let's list out some of her like like special uh, synergies right um jing yuan we explained why right we explained why already S zila qq they use a lot of skill points to go multiple times every time they want to go and they use skill points every time they want to keep using their skill um they're skill eating machines uh obviously that works really well with sparkle that's like the whole thing that she wants to do, right? Uh, she actually works really well. And shout out to Braxophone um, with this comp. Uh, Sparkle and Bronya on the same team with a blade goes crazy because they both have the action forward, right? So Blade will take his turn and then S Sparkle will take her turn and then make it also Blade's turn after. Uh, action forward Blade, you know, he takes another turn. Then Bronya will go, action forward Blade, he takes another turn. Right, and if you have high speed on all of them, if you have above 134 speed and they're going before, uh, they're going twice uh, before the enemy goes once, then repeat that process again. And Blade, without considering ultimates or anything like that, Blade will go six times. In the first turn, right? Blade will go six times a turn, and by by then, uh, after he's received a few buffs and also hit like six different times, he's gonna have his alt, so he he can use his alt, and then also he is definitely going to you know get all the stacks he needs for his follow up attack. So then he uses his follow up attack. Blade can go almost ten freaking times in one turn with this just just like off the top like just off the dome right and that is just insane that's <laughs> just nuts right so it works so you know she works really well with blade in in a team comp like that a little specific but hey um she works well with jing yuan zila uh qq uh she is definitely don hung's best pairing no questions asked they just i mean if you know anything about both the characters they work extremely well together um, because, you know, she gives the team a higher max skill points. It's the same reason she's really good with QQ. Um, gives the team high max skill points. Uh, gives your team a buff anytime an ally consumes a skill point. So Don Hong, who consumes three skill points uh, to, you know, power up his attack. And then he, you know, uses the attack. He's going to be permanently buffing your entire team. Uh, He's going to be basically keeping the buff up perma and also always getting his max charge of his of his uh, attack, which is his highest damage thing that he does. Um, Jing Liu pretty much wants to use a skill point every time she goes. Obviously, there's, you know, not like direct synergy there, but, you know, this is why I said she works just generally well with every DPS in the game. Argenti, yeah. Um, Dr. Ratio wants to use his skill every turn. Um, Himiko, there's no reason not to if you have the skill points for it. Um, things like that, right? This character is insane, right?
right? And because the, just her being on the field gets your team two extra skill points and she can alt also means that characters like Bronya, who wants to use her skill to uh, action forward somebody every time she goes, uh, and herself, who wants to action forward somebody every time she goes, it's so much synergy, right? And then also your healers will always be able to activate their heal uh, if, you know, if they need to when their turn comes around. Ting Yun, if you have a Ting Yun, if you run a Ting Yun and Sparkle together, Ting Yun will always be able to use her attack buff. There are just so many different synergies for this character. She works baseline decent with every single character in the game. And then for almost all of the best DPSs in the game, she has some kind of direct crazy synergy that can unlock them in ways that they haven't been unlocked before. So, yeah. Sparkle is my take for the best character in the game. Um, and maybe I'm wrong, and we'll see. We'll see how the meta plays out. Misha, Misha released and was dead on impact. I think Misha is unironically probably... Um, I would rather have a Shushang. I'd rather have an E6 Shushang and an E6... Sampo, especially if I'm have a dot team, then I would rather have an E6 Misha. Um, I just don't think there's support for characters who all of their meat is in their ultimate. I don't think that, you know, there there's enough love for that in the game yet. Maybe they can do that. I don't even know if that's really like a fun play style that people would like. I think it would have to interact in some kind of different way. Like they would have to have like the lowest energy requirement for their alt in the game. Um, you'd have to give them like an energy recharge rope. Um, maybe if there was like an energy recharge set, I mean, there kind of is that gives 5% energy recharge, but it's more, that's more of a support set. Um, and it gives like uh 10% crit damage or whatever it is to your entire team. Um, uh, to the, to, to the other members of your team. Um, there, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think Misha, I just don't think Misha does it right. Um, I think Misha is probably the lowest of any new character uh, on, on release. Um, uh, I don't think I've ever put a character in D tier, even the four stars whenever they've come out. I mean, you have Hanya, Lynx, Gwenaif, and Juyi. They're all right here in B tier. Um, a decent amount of them. I think B tier is pretty fair, but a new character releasing and instantly being, uh, D tier is kind of rough and I think that's exactly what he deserves. Uh so we'll see. We'll see. But he's pretty much dead on impact. I haven't heard anybody talking anything about Misha. Uh so if that miraculously changes out of the blue um and opinions change, I would consider putting them up but no. Black Swan. Black Swan is the hardest character to write for me. I just think that you're either using her with Kafka. I don't know. People made a lot of videos talking about how, you know, she isn't completely worthless in a non-dot comp, but I feel like if you're truly going to unlock, like if I were to put Black Swan and S plus. This is to assume that she's really that, that she's like I would say that she's like B tier. No, I don't know. I would say she's like A tier in a non dot comp and then S plus tier in a dot comp. And since you know, I don't want to say that you're guaranteed to get a dot comp every time. And also because there are such limited options for dot comps. Um, with is Black Swan really above Blade? I just don't know. I don't think so. Honestly, I honestly don't think so. I know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? To put, to put her in a dot comp, right? You're putting her with um, Kafka, 
Gwenaifen, Sampo, or I guess like Serval. And if you're stretching, you're you're pairing with Luca, um, Argenti. I would say Serval is even stretching. Um and that's like it. That's it to unlock the full potential. Or full 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 potential would be, you know, just the Kafka pairing. That's just obvious. Um But even almost, you know, even a really high potential is like when I I just don't know. I think if more dot characters are added, like characters that are actually focused on dot then her and of course Kafka can move up. I think Kafka moves up because she was added. But I don't know if she actually makes I don't think she makes it to S plus tier. And I don't think she beats Blade. Because it, it almost feels like Blade is the immortal, right? Blade is Blade is just, in my opinion, the best not S plus character in the game, right? If you were to describe where Blade should be on a tier list, I would be heavily pushed towards that, right? The best not, not directly top of the line character in the game. Because who doesn't Blade work with? There's not a single character that doesn't work well with Blade. There's not one. Besides, like, other DPSs that make literally no sense in pairing up with, right? Um, I don't know. He has a follow-up attack. You can argue that, you know, he'd be a decent pairing with, with Topaz, right? Almost every Harmony character can give him something that he wants, right? He works well with, uh, you know, Bronya and, and um, Sparkle because they're action-forwarding him. Uh, everyone works with Ron May. Everyone just likes breaking for a million damage. Um, and Ron May does give a lot of decent uh, buffs. Uh, he synergizes with... I, I don't know as much about Himiko. I haven't seen that directly, but he synergizes for sure with Fushuan and Luocha, who are the first and third, for my money, first and third best uh, I can't believe I'm blanking. Who are the first and third best um, sustain units in the game? Right? He works well with Ting Yun because who doesn't? Who doesn't like using their ultimate more and getting an attack boost? Um, the best DPS in the game, arguable, arguable, I guess. Um, but the best DPS in the game, Jing Liu, for my money, is like his best. Like, really one of his most synergized characters in the game. Like, you can go double DPS with that, and that's, like, one of the best comps in the game for double DPS. Um, he's very... He, he only uses one skill point every two or three turns, right? Uh, I forgot exactly how many. Um, my brain is not working for whatever at, at this time of the morning. It is... It's, like, 10 a.m. right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, guys. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. I, I kind of just do that. You know, I, I, I felt like I had to go on a rant for Blade because I feel like people are going to ride or die for Black Swan, right? And I just don't think I know yet. Right? I would say Black Swan is, compl is like, incredible. Right? But I feel like she hasn't had nearly the same level of like splash and impact that Sparkle has. Like Sparkle drops, it's like, yeah, I'm really good with every single character in the game. And then I elevate a lot of other characters. Um an unbelievable, unspeakable, unfathomable amount. And then Black Swan's like, yeah. Um, I've got big titties. I'm pretty good with Kafka. Like, I would say, like, 
you know, me and Kafka, we're, like, we're, we're one of the best. Like, we're one of the best team comps. And it's like, okay. All right. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. You're a really good DPS for sure. Yeah. You're, you're, a, you're definitely a top of the line DPS. Top five DPS right here on my list. But, um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's just where I'm going to put everything for now. Uh, I think I'm actually, uh, at, at a quick glance over every, you know, tier, I think I'm happy with where I put things at this point. Um, I'm happy with the moving that we did. Um, yeah. I just think that's, uh, that's really all I have to say. I think we're good. I think that concludes our Honkai Star Rail 2.0 updated characters tier list. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I must have, um, you must not agree with me on something. And if that's the case, right, you, if you agree or disagree, please put that in the comments below. Uh, I would love to hear your feedback for sure. And feedback has changed my opinion on characters, has made me look more deeply into them. Um, no human can know everything. Okay. All right. You know, that's my defense. All right. That's it. That's all I got to say. Um, so most of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. And in fact, um, you should be the change that I want to see in the world and subscribe. Um, you know, if you like this video, so, peace.